now the Gales will hold it. That's about two seconds. Differential. I do want to say I, I've been calling Shabazz Shabazz, and that's what he was when he came here. Now, <laughs> yeah. now he's Shabazz. So Happens I'm, all the time. Yep, I'm going with that. He's the player to be named later. So Randy Benable draw something up to this final 14 seconds. Although his team is executed just great. But, yeah, that's that's the luxury for Randy Bennett, Barry, is that he, whatever he draws up, you can, you can drop a post up, you could draw up a uh, screen and roll at the top for either Logan Johnson or Aiden Haney. You can have floppy action, which means guys running off baseline screens for jumpers. I mean, honestly, just like choose a play on your menu and this team can run it and they can score it. Startling. Yeah, that is not what I expected. As, as good as Aiden Mahaney is, I, I didn't expect the young freshman to come in here and kind of dominate the fifth-year senior, and Khalil Shabazz, the way he has on both ends of the floor. It's now a 22 to 5 run, and Mahaney has 10 of those 22 points for the Gales, and just man, so much fun. So, like one of my favorite things besides working with you, Parker, is watching <laughs> these young players come and grow as the season goes. They're getting better each and every week. Well, and, but with Mahaney, as we mentioned earlier, he was comfortable from the minute he walked yeah, on the floor. You're right. Oh, tough shot by Johnson, and he drops it in. And he, the Gales even defended that. He just did a great job of it. The Dons couldn't even get a half court three up. They shrunk the space around Roberts. I mean, that, that was an exclamation point to a fantastic defensive performance by a top five defensive team in all of America. Yeah, and really looking every bit the part of a team that could go a ways this coming season. And I'm talking about postseason. 39 25 at the intermission. Halftime activities after this. The WCC Halftime is brought to you by University Credit Union, who invites you to experience the credit union difference. To learn more about the benefits of banking with the cooperative, visit ucu.org today. Federally insured.
matured by NCUA. It is halftime, 39-25 lead for the visiting St. Mary's Gales. Right now, let's jump away to our expert, Andy Katz. He is with USF's Khalil Shabazz. Andy? Welcome, everyone, to a WCC chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by Khalil Shabazz from San Francisco. And you guys have had an interesting season under head coach Chris Gerlofson who took over for Todd Golden, and I think he's doing a great job. The blowout win over Arizona State, that certainly was, that was an indicator that this team certainly can reach a high level. A couple disappointing losses, but you finally got in that win column within the WCC. So first off, where is this team right now? I think we're in a good spot. You know, being able to get that win, um, obviously the season didn't go off. It didn't start the way that we wanted it to um, or that anybody expected it to. Uh, but just sticking with it, you know, finally getting, being able to get a, a road win and just a win in general uh, in conference is big time. So I think we're, we're headed in the right direction. What, what did that ASU win tell you? The best part, I think just being able to see that we can click on all cylinders for one 40-minute game. You know, there's times where we have stunts where we're playing really good and then, you know, we start turning the ball over or we're not locked in on the defensive details. But I think that game was the first game we really played a full 40 minutes and it was against the top 25 teams. So... Just taking, you know, those little things that we did in that game and applying it to all the other games we have for the rest of the year is going to be huge for us. So, all right, going forward this week, now that you've got that win, um, what's the mentality as to how you can build off this momentum with a road game against Portland? you got St. Mary's. I mean, it's now going to come fast and furious. Just, just build it off of that. You know, like I said, we finally got our first dub in conference. Um, taking the things that we did good in that game, taking the things we did bad, and moving on from there and just kind of just building off of that, you know, uh, going down to Portland, it's not going to be an easy game. So um, taking care of that and then obviously having St. Mary's coming to our home gym, um, being able to take care of that, it's going to be a big week for us. So if we're able to get two dubs, that'll be phenomenal for us, for sure. All right, last thing, Khalil, how have you handled even more responsibility <laughs> on those shoulders? Oh, man, just being able to just do whatever I can to be prepared for the games and help my team get dubs. Uh, you know, obviously last year we had uh, Jamari and he kind of took on a lot of the leadership. But this year, um, you know, me stepping into that role is definitely big time and just being able to make sure that I'm prepared myself because, you know, it starts with the individual before you can make sure a team's ready. So just making sure I'm ready for games, making sure I'm dialed in on scout and things like that. And then making sure that I can help my guys, you know, be able to come out with dubs and play their best. So I think that's the biggest part of that leadership I have this year, just making sure I'm prepared so I can do whatever I can for my team. Appreciate it. I uh, hope the good things continue for the Dons. Uh, I know it helps the league, and certainly uh, if USF can continue its winning ways. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. When you have created a decision for the room to have that was a choice. You have to now create increases for the room. What we were thinking in this government is that we were playing the groundwork. What was the government doing? I was just asking some of that money to take the tools for the room. We've been here about three years. By the time we left, we had 15 responses. When I started in 2012, there were about eight football programs in the country. In 2022, there are over 50 programs in all of the 
We welcome you back to the University Credit Union Halftime Show. Barry Tompkins, Casey Jacobson alongside. Casey, let's take a look at the standings in the West Coast Confer Coast Conference. And uh, what a surprise, who's on top? Yeah, huh? well, you know, BYU had a chance to beat the Zags in Provo a couple nights ago, but couldn't finish it. Julian Strother hit that late three that kept the Zags on top of the chart. But Barry, how about Pacific at three wins already? It's a really nice start for them. They were a team that went three and they only won three games in the West Coast Conference play last season, so really nice surprise there in Stockton. Yeah, and the Zags tonight, they beat Portland by 43. Oof. Portland, I hasten to remind you, beat USF on Thursday night. We're coming back. Still have more on the University of Credit Union halftime show. We're coming back to the hilltop on, at USF right after this. West Coast Conference basketball is brought to you by Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. And with that, we take a look at our first half stats delivered by Jersey Mike's. And uh, the numbers jump out at you. Yeah, I mean, I think so.
with that, we're set to start the second half. Barry Tompkins, Casey Jacobson, and look at the individual scoring in the first half. USF struggling just a little bit, even though they, they're doing pretty well down low, but not getting a lot of production out of the guards. Yeah, Tyrone Roberts did his part, but you're right, Barry. It's a good point. But meanwhile, same areas. They, I, I think they're allowed to make two easy passes. Everybody's getting involved, and I expect San Francisco to turn up the pressure a little bit, and somebody's got to keep Aiden Mahaney in front and... Uh, I thought Logan Johnson did a really nice job. I feel like he got to the paint at will. But bring extra help. Yeah, really good last 10 minutes played by St. Mary's. Shabazz still on the schneid. Coonan. Wow. So, Barry, I like Josh Coonan's game a lot. He's from Australia. He's probably one of the only players that from Australia that doesn't play for St. Mary's, That's by the way. That's true, ever. But, but, but Coonan only attempts four shots a game, even though he plays 21 minutes. He's not, he's not like, wired to score that way. Mahaney again, they leave him, but he can't make him pay this time. Loose ball is going to be out of bounds to, I think they going to say St. Mary's. Yeah, off Tyrell Roberts. Oh, Barry, you mentioned earlier uh, in our open about this game last year at World Memorial where USF was up big in the first half and the Gales like chipped it. I think these players remember that too. That's why they play two halves of basketball. They got to chip right. away at it one possession at a time here. Logan Johnson give it up nicely for Saxon. That's just the way you draw it up, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, there's no defense for that. In fact, I would say because Saxon is not a good foul shooter, Barry, you, you have to foul him in that. Don't let him lay the ball in the basket. Foul called away from the ball. I think they're going to get Mahaney on this. Logan Johnson with a runway. Just forget about it. Two Don step up. And if you help up instead of over, you're exposing yourself on the backside. And yeah, again, you know, Saxon's a 59% foul shooter. Just, just hack him on the arm. Don't let him get that ball up to the rim. Meeks. Meeks started quickly, tailed off a bit in the first half and turns it over. Turnovers have really plagued the Dons in this game. They have eight. Oh, let's credit St. Mary's. We've talked a lot about it. In the last three seasons, including this one, Barry, St. Mary's has turned into a defensive program. Right? They were an offensive program. Now they're a defensive juggernaut. I would count Bowen the floater. Bowen's got 14. Mahaney is just not letting Shabazz yeah. get around him. This is the second time I've seen St. Mary's in person, and I think this is the best I've seen Mahaney defensively. I think he's learning and growing. He's, he's developing more confidence. And Randy Bennett gave him the assignment, hey, freshman, you're going to be on their leader, Shabazz. Shut him down. And, you know, what's interesting is he's been able to do that and also score. Yeah. A lot of young players struggle with that. They can only focus on one thing at a time. There's another thing, too, that you just don't see in a lot of young players, and that's just that innate knowledge of understanding the passing lanes, understanding positioning on defense. There he is again. Again. Yeah. <laughs> just as you're talking there about. There you are. <laughs> that's how you do it, folks. Third foul on Shabazz. You know, and Shabazz, he, he made that look easy. Like, this is not easy, folks. Shabazz is one of the shiftiest players. You see that extended arm. Shabazz extends that left arm, and that's that. You go down, you're going to get that call. But again, the same call. Dukas and one. Same call. Yep. And, and, and Dukas is laughing about it, but that's the right call. And credit these officials for being consistent. If you're going to call it on one end, you have to call it on the other end. That, those are just the rules. Well, I had that elbow. I think it was more about that than it was contact. There's Shabazz trying to get around Dukas. Knocked out of bounds off of Alex Dukas. 13 on the shot clock. San Francisco hasn't even been able to get up clean three-point shots. I mean, they're five for 11, but they, they attempt almost 33s a game, and so far well under that pace. And, and even, as I recall, almost all of them have been contested. 
Loose ball picked up this time by Shabazz on the baseline. He's in traffic. Markovetsky. Really nice pass from Shabazz there. Markovetsky, who again, you know, in his limited minutes, he is a, kind of a safety blanket down there. There's it. Who was that? Was that pass to you, Barry? I you think were it open. was, yeah. You were open. I, I, I couldn't quite reach it, though. Right. And going the other way hard to the basket, Isaiah Hawthorne. So the press that time worked for the first time, really. And the USF bench is up and into this game. And Dukas from the corner makes him pay. He's got a momentum killer, too. Yeah, isn't it? Dukas made 53s on the year, man. He's a talented, deep shooter. Hawthorne, again, a contested three, but he got it down. Yeah, if they could get this aggressive and efficient Hawthorne, man, he's he's more of a, a defensive player, a rebounder, or kind of gives him a physical presence, only averages six points a game. And obviously, he's capable of much more than that when given the opportunity. Maybe he's the one that sparks the dunks. Well, they need a wake-up call from somebody. Down 13, not out of the question by any stretch of the imagination. All right, we're going to jump away. 16-46 remaining 13-point lead for St. Mary's. Officials went to the monitor during our time off break to confirm, and so they took one point off the board to the Dons, but still a lot of momentum. And credit Isaiah Hoffman for providing that spark, that jolt of energy. Saxon way up on the high oh. post now and down hard to Shabazz. Johnson working on Roberts, got into him. Good job by Roberts. Every coach I played for there will always say in the post, low man wins. And that time both of those guys got in a low stance, almost like they were sitting in chairs, yeah. and that's why we kind of had a draw there. They got fouled before the ball was inbound. Yeah, that's, the, that's the second or third time we've actually had that. There's some wrestling matches going on here on baseline inbound plays. Oh, 
this St. Mary's Gale team has been tested. They, were, they played the most difficult schedule that I've seen Randy Bennett in all of his years as Hoppe continues his awesome work. Yeah, I'm going to nip the little move right there. Yeah. But, you know, I've known Randy since I was 14 years old. He was an assistant coach in San Diego when my older brother Brock played there. And, you know, one of my only complaints about Randy is sometimes he schedules too, too nice. I think there was a, a year, maybe three or four years ago, where they didn't leave the state of California. They didn't How about that yeah. shot, man? <laughs> Over the outreached arms <laughs> of Volvo nice Markovetsky, who's 7 2. He's got a nice little highlight reel going in this game. Right? I say he does. And, and you pointed out, too, it's all within the system. You know, there's no hero man. Hawthorne, in the meantime, keeping his team in the fray. He's already doubled his average hop in. Tim Johnson trying to get the ball down low to Saxon. It went off of Markovetsky's foot. We'll jump away, and Mahaney just a moment ago, and you're going to see this shot right here, got it over the outstretched arms of a seven foot two guy and scored. Just that simple. 48 37. Gales. see his line an unselfish player who plays beyond his years and what you don't see on those stats is the defensive job that he's done tonight uh, from uh, holding down Khalil Shabazz USS leading scorer Barry he's the five-time WCC freshman of the week he's probably on his way to the six he might as well wrap up that award yeah. and mail it to Moraga right now this young player is awesome there he is again made a liar out of us that like, guy, that's like the, the first time he's made a liar. That guy out. can't shoot. Come on. He needs to stop. His legs are tired. <laughs> this guy, on the other hand, is perfect so far tonight. Isaiah Hawthorne. Five of five from the field. Yeah, might as well go back to the well. Why not? See what we did to him? It wasn't my fault. <laughs> I'll take it. No, so Aiden Mahaney is from Campo Lindo High School, which isn't too far from Moraga. He played with... Randy Bennett's son, Cade Bennett. They were high school teammates, and they're now best buddies on campus in Moraga as well. Campbell into a great high school program as Logan Johnson continues his assault on the rim. Man, he... <laughs> uh, Logan Johnson's one of those guys, when you guard him after 40 minutes of guarding him, you have to, like, ice every part of your body. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's true. That's very true. You know what's interesting, too, about St. Mary so far in this game? There's Shabazz, tough shot. Johnson with the rebound. No St. Mary's player shot more than 10 shots in this game. That's, and that kind of speaks to what they are, some of the parts. 
I, I mentioned the schedule before. I mean, they, they lost to Houston. That, they're number one in the country. They were when they played them. They are right now. And I think that performance, they lost by five points. I think it, it sharpened St. Mary's sword a little bit. They're, they're better for it. Barrett got in traffic, could not get it to fall. Good job defensively by the Dons. Here's Shabazz. This time he got all the way to the basket. But again, Saxon did just enough. And that's where, you know, as quick, as quick and fast as Shabazz is, this is where it, it kind of stinks to be six feet tall. In basketball, size matters when you're trying to finish at the rim. And he saw that Saxon was coming over, and he rushed that layup just a bit. And to be, you know, what are we now, 27 minutes into this game, Barry, and one of the top scorers in the entire conference is 0 for 7, 0 points right now is shocking. But San Francisco is still in this game. It's not like they're getting run off the floor. But Chris Gillerson is going to have to be a little bit more creative here and drop some, get some open shots. Well, while you watch West Coast Conference action, join the conversation using hashtag WCC Hoops. And for the latest news, scores, and more, follow WCC Hoops on Twitter. The problem for the Dons right now, Barry, is they have, when you're playing a team like St. Mary's, all right, you're struggling on offense, right? So we've got to kind of get that uncorked. But at the same time, we can't trade baskets with St. Mary's. St. Mary's has a risk. So they have a, a problem on both sides. If they get their offensive flow going, does it really help them defensively? You could argue that it does. When you score it, it allows you to set your defense, gives you a little bit more confidence. All of that said now, it's a 13-point game. Now, a lot stranger things than this have happened. 13's nothing. No. Well, it's something. It's 13, but well, you yes, know what I mean. Yeah, it's more than 10. <laughs> Logan Johnson, there great pass, but Saxon couldn't handle it. Here's Shabazz lead for Roberts. A little quick, I think, from Roberts. Well, that's huh? how they play, right? That's, yep. that's a shot he's earned. Here's Johnson, spot up Barrett. Fight for the rebound, and finally coming away with it is Hawthorne. Roberts was hot early, struggled a bit recently. Yeah, he has eight points, and I think all of them were in the first five minutes of this game. I think that may be right. Meeks got a man in the air, scored. And Meeks as well. I, I, if I remember, it was Roberts and Meeks both who kind of set the tone offensively and got USF was leading 20 to 15 at one point in this game. That's right. Seems like a lifetime ago. Mahaney. Wow. The combination of ball handling and shooting ability uh, in a freshman like this is pretty rare. Yeah, he just seems so poised. Yeah, a lot of guys who are good shooters, they're not strong enough to handle the ball against really good defensive guards. He can do both. Roberts gets this one. Yeah, Marcus Williams, that was deep. That I beg your pardon, Williams, I said oh, Roberts. That was well contested. And, and Williams is two for two from, from three. We mentioned how good of a scorer he's been. He's got a score, he's, scores mentality. Mahane again behind the screen. Now a switch with Hawthorne on him. This is the shot. Hawthorne tried to save it, but he's on the line. It'll be St. Mary's ball. And we'll take a timeout. Don's trying to get back in it. They trail by 11. 11 18 remaining to be played here in the second half. 53 42. The Gales.
tremendous right around the corner, including this year's University Credit Union WCC basketball tournament from Las Vegas. And you know, single session tickets are available right now. So visit WCCSports.com for matchups, brackets, everything you're going to need to know for this year's tournament. Here we've got an 11 point ball game, 53 to 42. 11-18 remaining in the game. Barry Tompkins, Casey Jacobson, telling you about it from here at USF. A really nice start to the second half for both sides. Uh, St. Mary's 50% shooting. Meanwhile, San Francisco 67%, or 8 of 12, including a couple of passes for that game. Marcus Williams. Inbound pass, and went hit every side of it. The Dukas could not get it to fall on the Dons. Come away with it. So an opportunity now to get this into single digits for USF. Hawthorne is for the valuable asset here in the second half. Nice pass. Nice, perfect. And a block. Waited a little too long, maybe. Yep. The hindsight's always 20-20, certainly, but yeah, you don't have a, a second and a half to make a decision down there. Mismatch here. Yep. Saxon. Smaller Williams. Yeah, and he just backs it down. down. Dump came a little bit late. And I, I know that Chris Gerlison, the head coach for you, doesn't want to double, but you can't, you cannot allow Saxon three dribbles without bringing uh, help, especially if Marcus Williams has given up probably six inches down there. That's just unfair. Saxons, who said, struggles at the free throw line.
Duke just missed. Saxon had a wide open layup. I'm not sure why he passed that up. Just dunked the ball. Coming the other way, Roberts again. That was a tough shot. That was a bad shot. Got two. <laughs> Saxon rolls to the basket. They give him the ball, and he doesn't even look at the basket. He had a wide open layup and said, you know, if they make that, it's great. But... Well, this time he's going to take it and he misses. And the follow by Johnson comes up short. Johnson fights for the rebound. Shabazz gets it out of there. Shabazz now with a bigger Dukas or the bowling on him. And Don's a reset. Don's again a chance to get this down to eight or seven points. Even. I know we have a, a lot of time, but doesn't this feel like a big possession? I, it does, yes. Williams tried to turn around. Getting a hand on the ball and controlling it nicely was Dukas. Duke, Dukas and Bowen defensively are a little bit. They are, and they're patient. Even when they get beat, they get back into play and, and they see if they can get a fingertip on the basketball or a rebound. Coaches call that making multiple efforts on the defensive position. Mahaney behind the screen for three. Mahaney with 18. I think he made his first or more than midway into the first half. All right. Roberts. Rebound to Mahaney. Those are shots that the dogs pass to have yeah. from both right. And, and I know it's a lot of pressure on Roberts and Shabazz. It is, but when you're playing the good teams, you need your best two players to make shots. That's just the way it is. Beautiful move without the ball by Logan Johnson. Saxon, who you remember started this game 0 for 5. It looked like he was lost, like he forgot to put gas in his tank. But since then, very five for his last six made field goals is Mitchell Saxon. And St. Mary has kind of made it a point to attack the Dons in the paint as early and as often as they can in their possessions, playing inside out, or even when they have the guys on the perimeter that are trying to get to the basket. And St. Mary's has outscored USF inside the paint 28 to 18. Yeah, it's really remarkable. You know, the other thing, too, and, and if you recall, as you mentioned, Saxon started out, he just couldn't find the basket. Randy Bennett sat him early in the game, just for a couple of minutes. Just hit the back. reset button. Everybody and needs it every now and then, exactly right? exactly what happened. Yeah, he's, he's now in his third year in the program, and we talked about his, his improvement. And last year, averaged three points. He only played seven minutes, so it's not like he was out there a, a ton, but he is 
made the most of his opportunity this yeah. year. Yeah, well, I, again, I can't say it enough. Shabazz still can't find it. Markovetsky gives him a second chance, but reaching in and tying him up. The possession arrow is going to belong to St. Mary's. Tough, tough night for Shabazz. Yeah, that, that three looked good, too. It, I, it I'm, we're sitting right behind him. It looked pure. It just popped out of the rim, and you can kind of see it on his face right now. Like, what do I have to do to get one to go down? It's hard to imagine in any realm that San Francisco can beat St. Mary's without Khalil Shabazz scoring a basket. Absolutely, yeah. Well, St. Mary's has answered every question that the Dons posed in this game. The other thing when you watch St. Mary's, everybody's moving. Yep, everybody's touching it. And they trust each other, too, when that happens. Drop it down for Saxon. Saxon waits for the clear out. Got to get a shot up here. Did, but it didn't go. Good job by Markovetsky defensively. But it still took 30 seconds off the clock, right? So St. Mary's doesn't score, but 30 seconds elapsed, and now uh, USF feels a little bit more pressure. Hawthorne fall away, and I think Saxon got a hand on that. It's going to be St. Mary's ball. Good defense. You know, the Gales, who we talked about their, their tempo, they're, they're just, they're as deliberate as any team you'll watch in all of college basketball in the offensive end. They're similar to like a, a Virginia Cavalier team out of the ACC, coached by Tony Bennett, of right. course, who used to be at Washington State once upon a time. Uh, they just, they use the clock and they want all five guys to touch it. They want the ball to reverse sides multiple times. And the other thing is they almost always get a quality shot. Like that. Yeah. Logan Johnson's got 16 in this game. Logan Johnson has lived in the paint. He has basically set up an office right in there, man. He's just like, I I'm going to work here tonight. Everybody else, you do your thing. Seventeen point lead now for St. Mary's, their biggest of the game. St. Mary's has six fouls, meaning they pick up another one, and the Dons will be shooting one and one bonus for the rest of the way. So be extra aggressive here. Roberts, and again, I, I believe Logan Johnson might have gotten a hand on that. And then a foul. Personal foul, San Francisco, number 12, Justin Beaker, is first. Well, San Francisco came out of the locker room in the second half. They had a, a, a bounce to their step, and they were shooting 67% at one point. They started 8 for 12. They have now missed their last five shots in a row. They're one for their last nine. Yeah, and it's a lot of that is caused by the yep. defense of St. Mary's play. Agreed. One very unusual thing in this game for St. Mary's, they have not had a bench player score a point, which is very unusual for them. Logan Johnson, tough shot. So Johnson with 18, Saxon with 12, Bowen with 14, Mahaney with 18. Yep. Okay. Mahaney. Yeah. And, and if you're Randy Bennett, you're, you're totally fine with that. Absolutely. Right? You make the official call that it was a, it was a very quick grab. It wasn't like over, you know, it wasn't overt. It wasn't obvious. It was a quick kind of tug of the jersey, which you can't do. But you're going to put the pressure on the official. All right, I'm going to guard this guy physically. And if I get a foul, I get a foul. But I'm going to let him know I'm there. Yeah. Shabazz is off the schneid. First point with under five minutes to go. A guy that averages 16 points a game, top five scorer in the conference. And he's played 30 minutes, by the way. Yeah, that's right. Cuts the lead to 17, but getting to be a very tall task now for the USF Dons. Yeah, they're going to have to start trapping everything. They don't have a choice. Trapping all ball screens and dribble handoffs to try and create turnovers. 
Hey, look at look at Shabazz. Right in his Ooh. pocket. <laughs> Got a switch here. Johnson is grabbed on his way to the basket that time by Williams. And we'll jump away. 350 remaining. St. Mary's going to the line. When we come back, they lead it by 17. Let's take a look now at our Ticketmaster WCC scoreboard. That is Ticket Smarter WCC scoreboard. And here's what happened tonight. And a uh, few surprises, I think it's fair to say. No, definitely. I mean, the Zags continue. Look at the scores of these games. Very really high level, high offense going on. You know, I love that. And Gonzaga got a monster game today from Malachi Smith. 27 points, 8 rebounds, and 5 assists. And just the people are kind of like dismissing Gonzaga a little bit nationally because they lost three games right. before we hit the new year, which is something like they never do. This this act team is still, I don't think they're a national title contender as, as they've been, but they are a final four good enough team. I, mean, I feel the same way. I mean, they're well coached, they're deep. They always get better as the season goes on. Shabazz, there it yes! Is. He loves the corners. I mean, he loves every part of the, of the floor, but he really loves the corners, which are six inches shorter, by the way. The three-point shot in college basketball is six inches shorter in the corner than it is anywhere else. Well, they can't allow St. Mary's just to hold the ball. I, I don't understand why you're not just trapping and, and doing something else here. Logan Johnson to the basket, draws the contact. Second chance from Saxon. Saxon looking at the free throw line. Three on five remaining. Here, I haven't been counting because I didn't know I should be keeping track of this, but how many times has Logan Johnson got to his right hand? Yes. I mean, it's probably, it's in the double digits now. He's been able to play downhill. They've had no answer for him to his right hand so many times. And again, a, a good no call, but you gotta, you gotta clear that defensive glass if you're, if you're the Dodgers. First. This is the only thing that, that St. Mary's hasn't done well tonight. Shoot, shoot the foul shots, and it's something that's been bugging them all year. Here's your next telecast coming your way January 19th, 8 p.m. Get started from right here in San Francisco as the Pacific Tigers come down from Stockton. That pushed the ball. Every second matters here. You don't give up. There's three minutes to go here. We've seen seen this happen. Meeks, hey, beautiful stroke, well, way down top. He can really shoot it. Brandon Bennett upset with Saxon for not seeing that a second earlier. There you go. Here's the trap now. And a steal. Two on one now. 
And Roberts takes it all the way to the basket. Greg Burton Williams takes it all the way to the basket. I'm just not sure why they weren't doing this about a minute and a half ago. Now a 10 point game, two and a half minutes remaining here. Here it goes. There's a trap again. Marshall Williams is back it out here now. Logan Johnson once again. They have to right. come. They have to come now. Barcelona's for three. Huge shot. First points off the bench. And they're big ones. And a steal. And Logan Johnson will take his time, but he's going to flush it. And now, it's impossible. Just about. Yeah, the wind's out of the sails. Jumping down low by Meeks. Makes it a 13 point game. 36 left. That's a full timeout. Defense creating offense here. Logan Johnson, this is what you call a two on zero fast break. <laughs> That's a 100% opportunity for a Gales team who's been mighty impressive. Just the full 40 minute. Well, coming up for St. Mary's, they're at Pepperdine. Pepperdine, a team with a lot of talent, haven't really had the results quite yet this year. Then Santa Clara, and uh, had a chance to do that. Santa Clara, St. Mary's game down at Santa Clara, which the Gales won. This time, they'll be back at their place. At BYU, it's an, always a tough game, always a sellout always. crowd. And then again against USF, and they finish up with Gonzaga, and they play Gonzaga tough almost every time. Oh, why wouldn't they? They're, uh, St. Mary's is a perennial top 25 program. They've been there now. Gonzaga's been a perennial top five program. Yes. But yeah, it would make sense that St. Mary's is the one team that gives them a game every single year. Take a look at what the Dons have ahead of them, and they got to turn the tide here. They'll play Pacific on Thursday, and then BYU, but they get them here. They'll be at San Diego on the 28th, at St. Mary's on February 2nd, and then home with Santa Clara on February 4th. I miss my friend Steve Lavin. They worked with him for eight consecutive years at Fox, and he took the job at San Diego now. I don't even want to tell you how long I've known Steve Lavin. <laughs> I knew Steve Lavin before he went to high school. Oh my, <laughs> go, because he's from here. He's from, he's from he San Francisco. Is. Yeah, of course I knew that. As a matter, matter of fact, his parents lived around the corner. Yeah. San Diego, the Toreros are nine and 11. Got to a hot start, kind of came back to earth a little bit, but give Lavin another year or two, Barry. No question, not a doubt in my mind. I'm sure he's enjoying the sunshine down there in San Diego as it's well. It's the perfect place for us. He's conceding this possession here, choosing not to foul. Now nine, now eight on the shot clock, and Logan Johnson again takes it to the basket, draws the foul. Exactly what you don't want if you're choosing not to foul, then <laughs> to then with that entire time and then commit your fifth foul. Uh, that wasn't a smart choice. So Marcus Williams will be done. Contributed though for the Dodds tonight. who is getting some minutes tonight, and we should mention the reason he is is that Julian Rishwin, who was a very good spot-up shooter for the Dodds, tore his ACL, and he has lost for the remainder of the year for the Dodds now, and that's, uh, that is a blow. Oh, yeah, and I just feel for, for Julian Rishwin on that. He's a junior, so he'll be back. That's, that's tough. That's an yeah. eight- to nine-month rehab and recovery there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Memphis turned the ball over 12 times tonight. It's resulted in 16 St. Mary's points. They've been opportunistic, the Gales, and that's what they are. Solid defensively. They're going to give anybody problems. Anyway, they already have. They've lost four games now, so they're not. Ooh, ooh. 
Logan Johnson, a little excessive there. Yeah. That's who he is. I mean, he's a very intense competitor. Watch here. If you raise the elbows and start swinging around, that could have been dangerous. Yeah, they're reviewing this. Yeah. Well, he's a tough competitor. Yeah. I mean, I'm not condoning that, yeah, don't get me wrong. This isn't a great look for, for Logan. I mean, he didn't re really actually get close to elbowing someone in the face, but just the act of it, though, totally unnecessary, which is often how they describe Flagrant Fouls. That's it's right. Unnecessary, oh, not, not a basketball play. Obviously, this call, whether, whether it's made or not, will not affect the outcome of this game. But Going back to St. Mary's, Barry, they've lost four games. We, we, we sung their praises because they've earned it. And they're not a perfect basketball team, right? We, we know that. They know that. Randy right. Bennett knows right, that. Of course. But the style that they play, which is a low tempo, slower style, they make you guard. They can shoot it at like three or four spots on the floor. And if Aiden Mahaney, their freshman, can play at this level, like going into March, then we have a team here that could, if they're successful at playing their game, can beat anybody. And I say that not like trying to puff up, you know, St. Mary's. They can beat anybody in the nation. I agree. But as they go deep in the tournament, Barry, you and I both know they're going to face some monster athletic teams that are faster and stronger. That, that Those are just the facts. And Randy Bennett also knows that, that, you know, these teams uh, like UConn, for example, would be, you know, like they're bigger and stronger and faster. Right. So they're going to have to deal with that. Right. And how do you slow, slow that tempo up? But they're also a team, I believe, that's going to get better. They're good right now, and I think, I do, I really believe they're going to get better and have a, a really nice mixture of senior leadership and juniors, and then, of course, the freshman Mahaney. Yeah, it's nice for Mahaney that he's kind of surrounded by a bunch of older guys, right? Absolutely. Makes a difference. Johnson is not even 24 in the game, and he takes a seat. He earned his seat. Yeah, he did. Almost every team, I find it interesting. I, you know how much I love the West Coast Conference. My brother, Adam Jacobson, played at Pacific and coached in this league as well. And the academic and athletic combination of this, this league is unrivaled to me. Um, everybody that's interesting to me, basketball-wise, plays a fast tempo except St. Mary's. That's right. Everybody else wants to run up and down, and St. Mary's is like, no, we're going to be the outlier. We're going right. to do our own thing over here. <laughs> and they get you playing their tempo. It just happens. Like to give up only 60 points right now to the Dons on the home floor. Impressive. Yeah, very. Inside a minute remaining in the game now. Shabazz going to go to the free throw line for three. St. Mary's foul. You know, the other thing about this conference, and I, I was talking to Chris Gerlifson about it today, is that it's a very good coaches conference. There are no gimmies in this conference. Up and down the line, it's a well-coached conference. It's a basketball league. Yeah, they take basketball seriously yeah. out here. off a tough night at the foul line it's becoming even tougher we showed how he just became the all-time leader in san francisco don history for made three point field goals only has one made three and it just came like a minute ago yeah so marshall on is going to try to use some of the clock here You gotta credit Mahaney with the job that he did defensively on Shabazz. 
denied him the ball a lot. That's right. I mean, Logan Johnson was the leading scorer, right, for, for St. Mary's, 24 points. As they continue to pile it on. <laughs> so Mahaney's got, now he's got 21. Not sure why Mahaney's still in the game. I don't think they have any more guards. That may be why. Shabazz over Mahaney. And again, Mahaney just defended the heck out of him. And that's going to do it. So St. Mary's. I think that falls in the category of impressive wins. Oh, are you kidding me? We came in talking about St. Mary's. This is the best defensive team that Randy Bennett has ever had in his, you know, two decades plus in Moraga. And they proved it. Like, they, they proved it again. I, we already knew it. And then they come here on the road. They shut down Khalil Shabazz and most of the Dons and got enough offensive production from Aiden Mahaney, Logan Johnson, and... Mitchell Saxon, that yeah. was enough. Yeah, just a sensational job up and down. It's, it starts with defense, it always has with Randy, and uh, here's where they stand now in the conference right at the moment. They are tied with the mighty Gonzaga Bulldogs. How is St. Mary's not ranked in the top 25? That is going to end come Monday. I actually think St. Mary's could climb all the way into the top 20, not just hang out in the, in the you know, the bottom tier right there. There's a very real, very real chance of that. So for Randy Bennett, the St. Mary's Gales, they've now won seven in a row. They walk out of here a 78 to 61 winner. And uh, for you, it's been uh, back and forth across the country and uh, pleasure to work with you again. Brother Barry, let's do it again as soon as we can. I'm ready anytime you do. So that's a wrap for us from here at the War Memorial Gymnasium at the Soprano Center in USF. St. Mary's wins it 78 to 61 for Casey Jacobson. I'm Barry Tompkins. So long, everybody.